Hey guys, we're back for some more standard. I'm currently trying to work on ladder and I wanted to introduce you to a new deck that I um, built today that I wanted to really just kind of take temporary lockdown to the next level. So before we get into it here, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. If you do like my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours who might also like my content, maybe dropping a comment or a like. And then for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much for coming back and supporting. I really do appreciate it. You guys mean the world to me. So I wanted to build a deck that um, not only could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the aggro decks in the format, but also a deck that could outvalue the control decks, especially um, the great nemesis blue-white control. So I, w I sort of went to work thinking about how to make a one-sided wrath. And so I was looking at the card temporary lockdown and basically the way I built this deck is that um, all of the permanents in the deck are mana cost three or greater. And then we have removal below that that helps us gain life. And I felt like the best shell to do this was Boros. With cards like Lightning Helix, which does three damage to any target and gains you three life, and Sacred Fire, which you can flash back from your graveyard for a second shot, which does two damage and then you gain two life. Um, these are really great tools that we have to help stave off, um, you know, like Mono White or, Bor or Boros Convoke or Mono Red. It's a lot of really aggressive aggro decks. And then I have four copies of Get Lost, which is kind of a catch-all that can deal with opposing Planeswalkers, kind of harder to deal with threats, it makes map tokens, and the beauty of this is that with temporary lockdown, those map tokens just get cleaned up naturally when we cast our lockdown. And this will take out all of the sort of low to the ground aggro decks. We have four copies in the main deck here. I also built a sideboard for you guys who are in best of three. Um, I have tried a couple games of this and I actually did manage to um, outvalue a Azorius control deck. So I was really happy with that win. It was a very long game very grindy, but it was super fun. And so do expect longer games, but you really can go the distance here with this deck. So, um, oh, you know, and I think I've got one extra ignition here. There we go, should be 60 cards now. Um, so we have three copies of Candy Trail. Candy Trail just kind of helps set up our draws, gains us some life, helps get us to the mid game. And then um, in the mid game, we have 14 permanents that can basically create infinite value on their own. Four copies of Adeline, if this is unanswered, it will create a veritable army. Same thing with Anim Pakal. Same thing with Mirel, Shield of Argive. Even though this is one of the only soldiers in the deck, I guess Anim Pakal is also a soldier, um, but this just builds its, an army. Just every turn you just increase. And so I'm thinking of this not as a kind of a top ender, but more as just like a value engine. And then we all know and love the Wandering Emperor, or some of us hate the Wandering Emperor, but um, it is also another just complete value machine. And so between all of these, we have our threats. And the kind of the way you play the deck is you, um, especially against control decks, you put out one threat, you know, like one Adeline, and then you just build it up until they deal with it. And then as soon as they, they force them to board wipe, and then play another one, and then force them to deal with that, and eventually run them out of gas. We have three copies of Angel Fire Ignition, which is a nice combo here with Anim Bacal, but also just helps against those aggro decks, gets us into the late game, and uh, yeah, it's just another way to kind of help secure victory over the really fast aggro decks. And then we have one copy of the Celestis, which just helps us um, do everything, gain life, draw cards, etc. Um, for our land, we have, I believe, 24 lands. And within that, I have a lot of value. Uh, because we don't really do anything until turns two or three, I have a whopping eight come into play tapped lands. And it's totally fine because we're not doing anything until we just lock down the board. So we have four copies of Elegant Parlor, which is the new surveil land, uh, four copies of Restless Bivouac, which is one of our man lands, which can help add counters, which is another combo here with Anim Pakal. Um, Wandering Emperor can also buff Anim Pakal, uh, which is a nice combo there. So then we have uh, four copies of Sundown Pass, 
um, three copies of Battlefield Forge since we you know, want to minimize the amount of life we're paying. And then we have room here for three Mirics to help give us that extra uh, mana of any color the turn it comes in and then kind of go along with tokens. And two copies of Demolition Field to deal with opposing restless anchorages and things like that. And then for the um, basics, we have one basic mountain and three basic planes. So as you'll notice, there's a lot more double white. And um, in the board, kind of the board plan here is just, you know, to answer um, the aggro deck sort of more efficiently. Everything's sort of more efficient here in the board. We have four copies of Knockout Blow to completely seal the deal on the mono red aggro matchup. We have four copies of Lithomantic Barrage, which can deal with, uh, basically we swap out all of our lockdowns for Lithomantic Barrages against like the Control Mirror. Um, for like blue white, we can deal with wandering emperors. We can deal with, you know, if they're running like um, Teferi, whatever, and um, just sort of a nice way to play through their counters um, against the graveyard decks, like the the new combo deck. We've got one copy of Soul Guide Lantern, one copy of Unlicensed Hearse, just to kind of give ourselves a little bit of variety in case we need to get rid of their entire graveyard. Um, or if we wanna just kind of take specific cards and just kind of use repeated um, graveyard removal. We have two copies of Fateful Absence. This is another card which gives them um, a clue token, but with our temporary lockdown, that's kind of a nice sort of combo where we can just sweep away that token if they haven't drawn a card yet. This is good against like green decks or Golgari or like big threat creatures that won't get blown away by temporary lockdown and we need like targeted removal for. One copy of Brotherhood's End, which is a nod to any kind of load of the ground strategies, good against like Mono Red, Boros Convoke especially, and then two copies of End the Festivities, which also come again, come in against Boros Convoke. And I feel like, you know, you could either up the End the Festivities or up Brotherhood's End. I think since we're going to have four temporary lockdown and a Brotherhood's End after board, that should be enough in the three drop slot. And then we just want the two festivities to try to get us to turn three and survive. So that's kind of the plan here for the, the board. Um, but yeah, the deck is super fun to play. I'm just having a complete blast playing it. Highly recommend you guys try it. It is so much fun. Um, with that said, let's get into some games. By the way, I just want to give another shout out. Um, so many of you guys just wrote some really awesome comments there. Um, since I just hit a thousand subscribers the other day, I'm super stoked and just want to thank you guys again. Um, it means a lot to me. So thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you so much. Okay, this hand is probably a non-starter here. I do want to have land that can actually produce mana. Um, I guess like we could maybe try to go for it with Candy Trail and try to get there. I'm just a little bit nervous, but maybe Candy Trail's good enough. I guess I'm kind of I'm kind of curious actually. So because that gives us double Scry, and then we can have like Mirix for a turn. If we can get another land, we can get the Demo Field hopefully to be another color. So and we're on the draw. So I'm actually kind of curious. I mean I think I'm gonna keep it just out of curiosity here. Might be wrong, but we'll see. Okay, we drew an elegant parlor, so that's great. Looks like we are up against Boros Convoke. So I think that the Helix feels pretty good here. Um, we only need four land for the entire deck to operate. Um, so I think we're fine just keeping that on top. Because um, we'll have the parlor Although I suppose we need one other kind of land to try to really get this going. We do have a Helix, and we'd like to get Emperor going. So as crazy as it sounds, maybe we actually put this in the graveyard. That does feel a little crazy. And we have Candy Trail. Yeah, you know, I think we want to make sure we hit two solid 
lands here. So I think I'm actually going to put it in the yard. Feels wild to do that, but we do have another helix in hand. Okay, Neem Pakal is pretty great. Now we can go ahead and Candy Trail. Set up another land. Um, well, it's not perfect, but Mirix can like sort of fake it. I, I guess I just kind of want to bin both of these here. I just want a real land. So I think I'm just going to get rid of both. We have enough where we have Mirix for one turn to get something going. Okay, this looks like a very different deck. Uh, I guess we could try to draw and get a land going, but I think I'm actually just going to go ahead and put a Neem Pakal out and sort of see what happens. We can also now use Demo Field to fix our, our mana if we have to. Not really sure what kind of deck we're up against here. Could be like Jeskai maybe, or... God, it looks like my deck. <laughs> this is wild. <laughs> um, okay, so I think we could go Candy Trail to draw a card. I think my, I might just use Demo Field just to fix our own mana. I think I'm probably just going to do that. I guess I should have attacked first. That would have been better. Because now they could potentially have something for a single mana. Uh, and we definitely want white here. Yeah, this this like literally looks like my deck. <laughs> this is crazy. I, I literally only built it today, so I have no idea. Okay, it's a little different, but I mean, like, it's still a value deck, so that's cool. Okay, it's, it's a White Sun's Twilight deck. Gotcha. Um, we could Helix that. We don't really even need to. I think we just want to hit our land drops here. Because this is going to become a 3-4, so I think we're fine just candy trailing here. Okay, did not hit, unfortunately. And then I think we just um, probably discard one of these Angel Fire Ignitions. Although I suppose, yeah, you know what? God, they were tapped out. I suppose I could have just Angel Fired Ignition. That would have been really funny. Um, I'm still just getting used to the deck, so. Okay, they had the sun fall regardless. So now we just present another threat. I think we just go for Adeline this time. And that's kind of the name of the game. Just force them to use all of their big threats, one, one for one. What is this? Song of Tone. Okay. We've got a bivouac, so that's great. And now we can go ahead and ignition this. Um, yeah, I think let's just ignition now. Mainly just to get a card out of our hand, if we're being honest. Okay, there's Sunfall number two.
And now we can actually lock down to kind of get rid of these tokens because we don't want those. I suppose they will have the White Sun's Twilight, so we might want to save the lockdown for that. Um, yeah, I guess we can kind of go either way on it. I think since we've got these ignitions, we're, we're less worried about these creatures. And they're, I guess they're two mana away for, for doing a big White Sun. So I guess we'll just hold the lockdown for that. Um, let's go with Mural, I guess. We could also just wait in Wandering Emperor, but I think Mural is fine. Just keep presenting big threats. Okay, so they went for the White Sun. Now we can just lock down, clean it up. Okay, those are just, those are not nearly as scary. We can still lock down again. Uh, they have, what, six of these things? They can't block, though, and we're at 21. Yeah, I think we can take a turn off here and just lock down again. Okay, they're so not done. Good God. All right. Um, now, I think let's Animpa Call here. Because we can block this with Animpa Call. I guess if they have something like Lightning Helix, it's kind of awkward. So maybe for that reason, I should just do Adeline instead because it lives. Although I suppose if we block, it dies. So yeah, maybe I'll just do Animpa Call here. Okay, they did have the Lightning Helix, unfortunately. So we've got about one more turn to mess around here. Um, I suppose we could play Adeline and then, like, not block. That might be the safest, I suppose. Although we're getting to a point where we really probably should block, honestly. Let's see. If we don't block, we hit, we drop down to two. They're going to have bivouac. We can gain some more light. I think we actually need to block here. Just being real. Just have to hope they haven't got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess they had it, but that's an interesting deck. So a bunch of different Song of Toten is just make a bunch of tokens and... Yeah, well, what, do you, what can you do? I think they have kind of a similar idea, though they're just trying to go sort of wide as opposed to have just like really hard to deal with threats. Yeah, this hand looks great. I guess we just have get lost here, so we just uh, get lost is nice because it can play into temporary lockdown if they have something tough to deal with. Deep cavern bat. I guess 
we just get lost in response. So they'll get to see our hand, but we can just kill it. Okay, now let's... Don't think it really matters here. I guess Adim Pakal's a little better. Adim Pakal, well, they both died to cut down. Let's just lead out with Adim Pakal. Okay, I guess... Adeline would have lived through Virtue. Forgot about Virtue. So we could just set up with Adeline here. We could also do Wandering Emperor end of turn, which is nice. Um, but we get to play Parlor if we're going to do Adeline, and I kind of like that. Sacred Fire, does that help us? I guess Sacred Fire plus Lightning Helix deals with Shieldred, so that's fine. Uh, here I think we just go Wandering Emperor end of turn. The problem is like they've got Reef. Actually, we can just get rid of this Reef. Yeah, I think we... Or we could get in with Bivouac. I think we get rid of their Reef, to be honest. It's a little bit slow, but I think it's fine. Then we can deal with Shieldred on our turn with Helix plus Sacred Fire. So they're probably leaving Siren back to be able to deal with Wandering Emperor. So I guess let's just demo field their Reef right now. Oh, I suppose this is an instant. I, I thought this was a sorcery for some reason. Um, that's fine. I guess on our upkeep before we draw, we can take care of the shieldred. Hopefully they don't have counter magic, which would suck. I suppose it's possible. Um, I guess let's... I think we just go for it, though. Okay, get lost is nice because now we have an answer to their virtue. Another reason why we've okay, so shield druid number two. I think we've got to save the get lost for their virtue, unfortunately. I think I guess we could if we have to we could like lock down their siren and then. Use Wandering Emperor on their Shieldred. Although they probably don't attack with it, to be honest. Do we want to lock them down? I don't think so. I think we just play Candy Trail this turn. 
like Candy Trail plus like Wandering Emperor maybe. Do we want more land? We could use another land for our um, flashback, but it's not that huge a deal. I don't think we like need it, need it. It would be kind of nice. So I guess like we can do like Emperor, then like next turn, like flashback, kill the Siren, save the lockdown. Yeah, that actually does feel pretty good. So let's maybe leave one land on top. They're walking right into my trap. Well, I mean, they know about the lockdown, so that's okay. Okay, now we can Wandering Emperor. They'll probably kill it, but that's okay. Or counter it or something. Ah, Tishana's Tidebinder. Well played. <sighs> so now we have like the option of like, do we need to get lost the shielded to avoid dying? Maybe. Because I guess like what we could do. It really plays into their virtue though, because they just go virtue next turn and just get infinite value. I think we have to try to like not have that happen. So that means we might have to give up the Emperor. Just take the damage. I think we lock down. Oh god. Like we really need like another answer for their I think we yeah, we, we might have to actually get lost here. I think we might actually have to. Uh, let's see. Let's let's tap that a little differently. I think we're under so much pressure. We just have to actually kill the shield rune, unfortunately. Now we can draw. Um, yeah, unfortunately we don't really get to... I guess we could gain the three here or we could just get rid of all this stuff. I think get, getting rid of it is actually a little bit better. So just going for the lockdown play. Yuck. I think it's the move though. So we just lock it down. And then I think we, oh, you know what? I wanted to, wait, what happened here? Oh, never mind. Yeah, the water number doesn't do anything. That's right. Yeah, unfortunately they have persistence ready. I'm never done for good. So we need to find an answer for their virtue now, unfortunately. Okay, that's a good start. Um, lockdown doesn't do it, right? Because it's considered a seven mana. Yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, so we need to get rid of both of these. And then I think we need to basically draw into it. So that's our out. Did not get there. So I guess we just demo field their field of ruin right now while we have the chance. <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, unfortunately, we were under a little bit too much pressure. So we needed them to... Oh, they've got another shielded ready. Whew. I think that might be pretty close to game. Okay. We don't have the mana quite. <laughs> We're one short of Helix plus Sacred Fire, but they just get it back next turn anyways. So yeah, I think this is going to be pretty much a wrap. I'd love to show you guys a win, <laughs> but I feel like yeah, these have been close games to some degree. I will say that decks that are like really heavy on like hard to deal with targets like Shieldred do really stretch what the deck can do because you basically only have like uh, Wandering Emperor and four like four Wandering Emperors and four. Um, get lost to deal with those types of creatures. So it's possible that maybe moving some of those um, what's the other, the two mana instant that's in white that destroys creature or planeswalker maybe bring in like a couple of those main to like help shore that up if you are seeing that a lot. Yeah, double lockdown Adeline. Eh, feels good. Okay. Up against another control deck. <laughs> Oof. Um, all right, well, it's Candy Trail. Wandering Emperor is good. Can get that going. Restless Cottage. Maybe this is Jund. Could just be straight Jund. I think let's just start with Adeline here. Okay, never mind. It is Domain. So let's just go for Emperor this turn. Okay, a Nimpa call looks fun. <clears throat> so we can do that. I guess we could also just get rid of their Restless Cottage right now and then also play a Nimpa call. So maybe we do that. I think we just want another... Um, actually, we can go for Mountain. Hopefully we live to the attack step and they don't have more removal. <laughs> we got through an attack step. Good lord. <laughs> they probably just board wipe next turn, unfortunately. But 
You do what you can. Yep, there's the sunfall. Okay, so now it's... Oh, this is cool. We can uh, get lost end of turn to get back either our Wandering Emperor or Adeline. Let's Candy Trail. Yeah, I think we are planning on doing that. So let's Candy Trail. Could also get in with Bivouac. But... That does not feel as strong as using Get Lost here, end of turn. Okay, now that they're in a Traxa range, this is getting rough. We might have to save, um, although actually I suppose we could just, we could just get lost, get back the Adeline and block. The problem is then we like, we can't really fight through Stomper. Hmm. This is kind of gross. Um, we might need to kill Stopper also. It's kind of a hostile board here for a Wandering Emperor. Or an Adeline, for that matter. I think it is Adeline, actually. Because if we... Get back the Adeline, and then we block. And then next turn... We can um, use Bivouac to make this in like a 2-5 or something, or a 3-5. Bivouac will die, but we'll be able to fight through this thing. Huh, let's see. I kind of I want to do like that plus a Nimpa call to get like more attackers in. Maybe it's better to just set up, though. Like, I kind of want to just lock down right now. I think I just lock down, get rid of the tokens, and then set up here with a Nimpa call. If they have another board wipe, it sucks a lot. Or if they have Angel, like, there's so many bad things they could have here. But I think we gotta kind of got to go for it. This is just another, like, <laughs> rough matchup pre-board. Okay, so now if we bivouac, we can make Adeline big enough to live through the stomper. And I think we, we can't attack with an Impa call, we're just going to grow him naturally. So much for the bivouac. <clears throat> but at least like starting to threaten a little bit here. They need like an Atraxa or a board wipe. I guess they can kind of like tread water for a while with this cottage, but. I mean, in, in reality they have a, yeah. 
that'll do it. We do have the lockdown though, which is nice. <laughs> okay, they've got herd migration. Oof. We need another lockdown stat. Celestis is not going to do it. Let's see, that's 15. Yeah, that's game. Whew. Swinging for the fences here, not really getting there. But I tell you, the deck is fun to play. I promise you it's fun. <laughs> Probably need some tuning, but I am enjoying it. I just want to just kick the teeth in of Azorius Control and Boros and Mono Red. <laughs> That's what the deck is designed to do. It's not, <laughs> doesn't maybe do as great against like Golgari or Domain, at least not pre-board. Aha, Very Online Dad is a Mono Red player. <laughs> so we will see if we can rally against Mono Red. This is a good hand against Mono Red. Okay, uh, don't need another bivouac. Do we want to have... Oh yeah, we don't have access to Helix yet. We could bivouac here in Helix. I think we just want to set up Adeline though and just kind of get that going. Because we can just lock down around the Adeline. <laughs> now, if we think we're gonna help I think we can maybe do a Nimpa call here. They do have mana up and they almost certainly have um, lightning blast or whatever. Um, just wondering if we should wait on lockdown. Uh, you know what, I think we should just lock down now just to be safe. Just slow down the burn. Force him to have it all. That's not gonna do it. Um, I would like to have like Helix up, so I think we just go Candy Trail here. Candy Trail with access to Helix. And I think we could use five mana next turn. Actually, let's see. We're going to use Helix at some time on this turn. Or Candy Trail. We, we, we could use 5 mana, so I'll keep the Sundown Pass. We could also play Pakal here. I think just to be safe, though, it's probably a little bit better to just leave Helix up.
And actually, I suppose we could have candy trailed last turn, played the land, and still have Helix ready. So that, that was a mistake. I forgot about that. Um, let's just Helix their adversary, I guess. Actually, we don't we don't need to helix it yet. Okay, I guess let's helix their swift spear. Now we can replay the Adeline. Actually, I guess we can Celestis and Adeline, or we could leave Candy Trail up. But I think we're th at enough life at 13 that we can just go Celestis into Adeline. Okay, so they kill the new Adeline with Nahiri's. They're definitely giving us a fight, for sure. So we don't quite have enough for a Nimpakal plus Bivouac. I think we want a Candy Trail here. And then just play another Bivouac plus a Nimpakal. Okay, they've got, <laughs> whew, they've got a hand. Ah. So four, six, eight, ten. We can't block the one one, unfortunately. Force blocks here. We need a miracle off the top. That's not it. That isn't it either. Oh. Yeah, unfortunately, didn't get there. Well, we're going to do one more game, and if we get swept, <laughs> uh, maybe play a different deck. But I enjoyed building it. I think it's a good deck. I've had fun sharing it with you guys. Okay, yeah, this hand looks great. I mean, I'm super excited about it. Okay, it is the nemesis here, blue-white control. We will see if we can go long. Um, ignition is good here, actually. Assuming we can get Pakal to survive. I think we just put it in the yard, though, because we can still play it from the yard. OK, 
Okay, it's a slightly different version of blue white control. Uh, yeah, we want to keep drawing land, so that looks good. And I will take... I think we want to go up to five. Well, four land is always good, but we've got another land in hand here. Maybe we stop at four and then try to get some more action. Let's lead out here at the Nimpa call. We'll see if they kill it on sight. I think they want to try to get it into combat to maybe use a Ganjo. We're not falling for it. Uh, we can use our ignition in hand here and play the bivouac if we want to, or we can just try to play the ignition from the board. They have mana up though, so this seems highly suspect. Um, I feel like they're gonna just use like Emperor on us. But at the same time, I mean, yeah, I think maybe the play here instead is to just try to get in naturally and then use Emperor to save it if we, if we have to. I'd feel a lot different if they didn't have open mana. Like, if they do have Emperor here, it would have been right to use Ignition. Yeah. <sighs> Although, if they try to get it that way, I mean, I guess they just don't care about it. We could kill it with our own Emperor, but then they just swing back on ours, um, and that doesn't feel very good. So I think we just let it go. We could lock down right now, actually. Um, I suppose we could Candy Trail. Let's Candy Trail, actually. And then we could candy trail again, but I kind of want to lock down, so I think I'm just going to wait. They're strongly considering whether or not to exile any Bacall. And I get it. 
it's a threatening card. But they're going big. They're going to see if they can win the odds. All right, so now we don't have enough to do ignition plus lockdown. So let's just go ahead and bivouac, and then we can lock down. Get all those pesky tokens out of the way. And then even Candy Trail. And I think another Lockdown plus Get Lost both feel pretty good, actually. Let's see, can they... Yeah, we can't quite kill Elspeth. We want to get working on Elspeth. Oh no, they've got the smite. Oh, what a beating. We can take out the Emperor though. So yeah, we get lost their Elspeth, uh, if we can't just attack it down. invasion oh geez yeah that that lockdown could not come soon enough good lord um, all right so I think we just get lost and then prepare for the lockdown so if we get lost we'll have three mana up let's play the mountain so we can then get wandering emperor also I think we want to do this now so they don't get any more activations off their Elspeth. We could have also killed the wedding festivity, I suppose. But I feel like Elspeth was a little bit more dangerous because it could like make things fly or do all kinds of nonsense. And now they're gonna get a Teferi. They are definitely flipping this battle. No question. to think I'm good at thinking.
Okay, let's get Emperor going. I think we just want a plus because we're going to be locked downing here. Oh yeah, Teferi is actually a two... That's hilarious. <laughs> then we can get started with this knight. Wonder actually doesn't do much right now. I suppose I, well, I can get rid of our four four. That's not true. Keep your eyes shut. Okay, so if we just double angel fire here, this thing is going to be an eight eight a nine nine with wandering emperor's help. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Remember your training. Okay, unfortunately I do have answers though for Wandering Emperor. Lord, <laughs> not another invasion. Whew, we need another lockdown here. Man, I, I'd play with eight of these things if I could. Um, yeah, Wandering Emperor does not get us out of this. Wow. So I think we need to do Wandering Emperor to get rid of their double striker. I'm not overconfident. You're just underwhelming. I am now we're satisfied. taking nine. Uh, we could, I guess, chump with Bivouac, but that feels pretty bad. I think we just take it here and hope to draw out of this problem. Not going to 
Elspeth Resplendent, wow. Okay, let's make a token. And that is not going to do it. Uh, we're at 21. Can we survive another turn? Yeah, I think we can. So I think we play out the Adeline. We can make two blockers here, three if we sack the Emperor. Right now we're facing... They give everything plus one plus zero. These would all, this would be 20, 26. If we block two of them here, we're still taking 10, 16. So I guess we can go plus one counter on the Adeline and still survive. But yeah, it's pretty rough. I suppose Elspeth make ones make one of them flying or yeah. It's pretty much over. Be brave. This looks like a fun deck too, actually. I mean the invasions and then all of the uh, wedding announcements. Planeswalkers. Surprised that they don't have any like actual board wipes. It's kind of a maybe they do and just haven't used them. I have no idea. All right, so I think we maybe have to throw a bivouac under the bus here. We're taking 12, 18. I guess we're we're not taking lethal here, but. Probably a good idea to not take all of it. Now we can take out a knight and then also just chump one of these knights. Yep. Pretty much need top deck lockdown or that's it. That was petty. <laughs> it was so unnecessary. Okay, yeah, that's not gonna do it. Well, unfortunately we got reverse swept, so that that sucked. I do love the deck. I still think it's a fun deck. Um, it's, I guess it probably needs a lot of tuning to get there, but I think it's a great deck. And let's, I would show you the stats, but the deck <laughs> is 0-5 right now. So, um, yeah. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you here for the next one. And you guys are awesome. <laughs>